Good morning, children. Good morning. Today, in this fine morning, we will discuss about the natural vegetation and wildlife. Previous class, uh, just before your monthly test, I hope you have written the monthly test very well. I think also skips. I have been checking your score, good marks. You are written well. At the same time, there is a authorities has given assigned work regarding the conducting of viva test that is going on in this week. As usual, we will continue with this topic that is natural vegetation and wild. Last class we had discussed about about the vegetation and different types of vegetation, grasslands and skirts. Right? We will continue with the topic. Children? This module includes introduction, natural vegetation support, forests, grasslands, shrubs, and recapitulation. Shrubs. The important characteristics of shrubs are they are grown in regions of low rainfall. They are small, thick, and covered with thick cuticles. Sometimes leaves are modified into spines. May have thick and fleshy leaves to store water. Found in dry, desert-like regions. Rainfall scanty, high temperature. A scarce vegetation cover, adapted to survive an arid environment. Have the economical water management system, waxy covering over leaves. The common animals found in these regions are camels. Lizards, kangaroo rabbit, tarantula, etc. Now let us know about tundra. The chief characteristics of the tundra regions are found in the polar regions. Lands are snow covered for most of the year. Receives less than 10 inch of presentation. Temperature during winters is less than minus 35 degrees Celsius and ranges between 2 degrees Celsius to 13 degrees Celsius in the summers. Limited growth of natural vegetation. Small shrubs like mosses, lichens, etc., are found. Animals have thick fur to protect themselves from the cold. Polar bear, sea, walruses, musk oxen, reindeer, and caribou are found here. Let us explore the wildlife of the Arctic region with the help of the following animation. The Arctic is a polar region located at the northernmost part of the Earth. The climate is cold winters and cool summers. Summer season lasts just two months here. However, the short summers so many animals and birds roaming in the Arctic region. Polar bears live only in the northern Arctic, where they spend most of their time on ice floes. They are the largest land meat eater in the world and the largest of the bear family. The melting mainland snow reveals spots that draw thousands of wind, wild fowl. These are snow geese. Snow geese are medium-sized groups 
that grades on the Arctic tundra. The snow moves travel south in very large, high-falling, noisy flocks. The Arctic sea is also rich in food. There are birds that feed on fish that gather in the thin shades of floating ice and nests on nearly nearby land. Guinea pigs and gilmores are such birds of Arctic. The Arctic foxes live here all year. They are well adapted for the cold, harsh weather of the Arctic. They began to search for food during summers. Darwin, Snow Arctic, and Snowy Owls are some of the Arctic birds that live here year round. Snowy Owls live on the tundra. They are nocturnal, but during summers they can hunt in daylight too, as there is no night. Lilies are small mouse like animals that live in the Arctic tundra. In summer, they are brown, but in winter, they are all white. Lilies are the favorite food of many Arctic animals, like Arctic hawks, snowy yards, and other predators. Another variety of foods here is barnacle. Barnacle bees, which are the migratory birds shared by Arctic and the UK. They avoid hawks and fly nesting on inaccessible cliffs. What are the tropical grasslands in East African lands? The options are A. Campos B. Savannah C. Laos or D. Pampos The answer is B. Savannah Explanation Tropical grasslands in East Africa are known as the savannah grasslands. These grasslands grow in the areas with moderate to low rainfall. The grasses in these grasslands can grow up to a height of 3 to 4 meters. Woody plants, shrubs, or trees can also be seen here. Savannas cover almost 50% of the land area of Africa. Let's summarize the topic. The natural vegetation of the region depends upon the local climate. Natural vegetation is broadly divided into forests, grasslands, and shrubs. The forests are broadly classified into tropical evergreen forests. Tropical deciduous forests, temperate evergreen forests, temperate deciduous forests, Mediterranean forests, coniferous forests. Grasslands are broadly classified into tropical grasslands, temperate grasslands,
children just now you have witnessed the video about the natural vegetation and wildlife we have just now you have seen about the scurs we started with the scurs scurs generally grow where the areas are receiving very less rainfall scurs are grown where the place is receiving less rainfall if in india today the complete western rajasthan and gujarat we can find various type of scurs okay because that region receives very little amount of rainfall right at the same time even if you go beyond the northern region that is polar region we can call it as a tundra region tundra means that is polar region above the arctic circle 63 and of degrees so this region entirely covered with the ice and snow complete glacier slow moving mass of ice the ice is flowing through the year here the life conditions also very difficult here the eskimos some primitive people like tribal people can live in this region polar bear snow leopard these are the common animals you can find in the polar region right so these are the things which you are discussed in the topic we are seeing the slides so mainly the vegetation here can be classified into four types right and where these vegetation belts grow in the world we have seen the slides clear so next class we will continue with the exercises and answers is it clear thank you